Welcome to week 14, everybody. It is almost fantasy playoff time. Holy cow. And what a finish last night. We will talk about the Saints and the Bucks. And, of course, the six teams that are on by Atlanta, Chicago, Green Bay, Indianapolis, New Orleans, and Washington. What are you going to do this week? you got to fill out some roster spots. I'm Adam Azer with Jamie Eisenberg and Dave Richard. It's an interesting waiver wire week. And, you know, I was thinking, I was like, man, I can't think of anybody that's like a must-add. And then, bam, Jamie, I saw your notes. Oh, yeah, that guy. I always forget about the Thursday game, James Cook. James Cook is a, is a big one. How's the waiver wire looking this week? It's okay. I mean, it's not, you know, there's no superstars, I don't think, you know, because there's no direct injury replacement for anybody. You know, I, I think if Kenneth Walker's out, DJ Dallas might be the best guy. You know, it could be, uh, I would anticipate probably a committee with, you know, Travis Homer and Tony Jones. Um, very interesting Tony Jones story, by the way. Um, really? <laughs> Tyler Huntley, um, you know, could certainly help with his rushing ability, but. You know, we got teased a little bit last year with the one big game, and then he was kind of disappointing. So, you know, I don't think he's necessarily going to be a, a must-start guy in one quarterback leagues, especially taking on Pittsburgh. Um, the one that's probably the 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 most likely starter, if he can, you know, pick up his play from what he did last week and what he did in his first three games, is Greg Dolchitz. You know, just because he's playing a position that we need help at, and he looked good, and you know, maybe it's just Cortland Sutton's absence is uh, is the key, as opposed to maybe Jerry Judy's absence. Yeah, and you know what? Judy only played 38, 39% of the snaps, so they were both mostly absent in that game. Sutton actually played more snaps than Judy despite leaving with an injury, so you'll expect more from Judy. In fact, if Judy is available, I mean, he had a really good game considering the amount of snaps he played, and that's that would be a shallow league thing facing the Chiefs this week. Hey, Dave, what's up? I got to fill in the blank for you. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, fill in the blank. Tom Brady was blank last night. Not good. <laughs> but, you know... When it counted. But at the end of the game, when when they started to kick it into high gear and you know, kind of hurry up mode, he got into rhythm and yeah, he had a little little help from the refs on that pass interference call deep down the field to set up the first touchdown. But for the first three and a half quarters of that game, he looked he looked a lot like the quarterback we've seen for the majority of this year. Yeah. Oh boy, he, it was so bad, and then he. I just don't know how people feel about him. I, well, from a fantasy standpoint, I know how people feel about him. Uh, was that a bad call, the Evans pass interference? No, but it's it clearly helped them, saved them a lot of time yeah. to push downfield. I think it was one of the better deep balls, probably the best deep ball he threw all night. Could have been a big play for Mike Evans, who, mm -hmm. again, has a bad game against the Saints. All right, we'll get to that in a little bit. The injuries we're keeping an eye on. Uh, well, Jimmy Garoppolo is out for the season. The 49ers signed Josh Johnson. They are keeping an. They will, are probably not going to sign or wait, uh, claim. Sorry, Baker Mayfield, who may not even make it to them on waivers. But Kyle Shanahan said he'd be surprised if they added Baker Mayfield, who was released by the Panthers or waived by the Panthers. Lamar Jackson is week to week. He is very unlikely to play this week. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. We got to keep an eye on him because. He's, you know, he left on the last play of the first half. He played through it, but now he's on going to be on the injury report. Same with Tua, but it seems like Tua is certainly going to play. I mean, that, that one I think we'll be a little more, a little less worried about. And Ken Walker's got an ankle injury. Joe Mixon could clear the concussion protocol early this week. Deontay Foreman has a foot injury, but he is hoping to play this week. He expects to play this week. You can keep an eye on Chuba Hubbard as a potential waiver wire ad. Uh, Traylon Burks is dealing with the head injury. Jalen Waddell says he's going to play this week. Mike Williams expected to practice this week. Hayden Hurst is doubtful. Those are not all the injuries, but those are the key ones here as we get into the waiver wire priorities. Uh, Jamie, all right, so if you want to lay out the top three, who would they be? I'm going to go James Cook one. Uh, I'm going to put Cam Akers two a little reluctantly, but I think just based on what he did plus his matchup on Thursday against the Raiders, he can be a decent plug-and-play option for you this week, and then we'll see what happens moving forward. But you know, you sort of alluded to this with John Walford starting that the offense will look a little bit better and did, you know, so hopefully that's going to be the case. As long as he's healthy, he's dealing with a neck injury. If you need another running back, you can put DJ Dallas third. Uh, I think just best overall player, though, would be Greg Dolchitz third. Um, but Tyler Huntley, if you need a quarterback, uh, the wide receivers, again, it's very similar to last week. There's really no, I, I think, well, I guess last week we had a slam dunk guy to add. He didn't necessarily he materialize DJ right. Jones. Um, but in terms of how we sort of viewed it, like there was just a <laughs> wide open field. Um, there's definitely a wide open field, but I'll put Nico Collins at the top just because Brandon Cook's banged up. 
and he did get 10 targets. He's just getting a lot of opportunities. So hopefully it starts to translate into some bigger games. He did score a touchdown, but just not, yeah. you know, a lot of uh, other things on top of it, given 10 targets. Yeah. And it's obviously a bad matchup for Nico Collins with the right. Cowboys, but they just lost one of their starting cornerbacks. And I don't think he's going to get the shadow treatment from Trayvon Diggs the way we've seen Lazard and Jefferson and Michael Pittman get. Uh, so if you get another 10 target game, you could have a decent game from Nico Collins. So it was James Cook, Cam Akers, DJ Dallas with Greg Dulcich, Tyler Huntley, Nico Collins, depending on what you need. We are slightly lucky that the six teams that are on by are not exactly offensive juggernauts. Dave, who are your top priorities this week? I mostly echo what Jamie said. I think Cook is the best option if you're looking at rest of season appeal and week 14, like low end PPR appeal. There's no guarantee that he's going to do what he did last week, but we've seen him start to play a little bit more and he's been looking good. So Buffalo could pivot to him in their offense. And that would obviously hurt Devin Singletary. I, I would only take acres ahead of Cook if it's a non PPR league and you need to win with a running back this week because that matchup against Las Vegas. Should be very good. Even I think Cam Akers can put up some good numbers in that matchup. I'm not sure about DJ Dallas, though, because he got banged up in the game. I, I don't know if he's a lock to play. And even if he does play, there are other running backs that could get into the mix, whether it's Homer or Tony Jones, that could take work away from DJ Dallas. So I'm probably not going to pick him up unless it's with my maybe second or third waiver claim. Uh, agree with Jamie on Dulcich being at the top of the list of tight ends. Agree with Collins being at the top of the list of wide receiver. If I need a quarterback this week and I'm lucky to have Jared Goff on the waiver wire, I'm making a beeline for him. If I'm without a quarterback this week or if I need a second guy, whatever the case may be, maybe I want to have a good backup quarterback for the playoff run. And uh, there are some defenses out there that I think people should try and sink their teeth into. Oh, I, really? Because I thought I, it was a horrible week for DSTs. Let me tell you something. The Detroit Lions defense has been playing much better football over, I'd say, like the last three or four weeks. And I don't – they're not going to be my favorite choice to get because I, I I like the Dolphins defense better. But I, I think that they could the end Dolphins? up being pretty good and stymieing. They're not great. Neither one of them are great. But all right, look, let me start over. There okay. are four DSTs that are widely rostered. You're going to have a hard time finding the Chiefs, Seahawks, Steelers, or Jets. Okay. So if you're – if you didn't do your homework and you didn't get a DST for week 14, here's what's left. Dolphins, Lions, Cardinals, Titans. And I just, I look at the Chargers offense. I think they're a little misjointed right now. I look at the Vikings offense. They're pretty good, but the Lions defense has been good too. They've given you at least 10 fantasy points in four of their past five games. So I, they're not going to be like top five DSTs for me, but they're going to be ranked. They're going to be interesting options. So if you need a DST, those are two that you might be able to look for. Yeah, I'm crossing my fingers that the Steelers and the Chiefs are available. Of course. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's there's a chance that that one of those you said the Steelers, Jets, Chiefs, and what was the other one? Seahawks. Seahawks, yeah. Seahawks facing the Panthers. There's a chance that one of them could be available in your leagues. I don't know about I don't know how I feel about the Jets against the Bills. They were really good against the Bills a few weeks ago. Uh, mm -hmm. and they are very good, but it's not like I'm excited. They, they have at least twelve fantasy points in seven of their past nine, nine yeah. or more in eight of their past nine. The, so, the Bills tough matchup for sure, but they're playing great. Okay. Um, all right. So, James Cook, uh, would you say that James Cook, if you don't really need anyone for this week? Yes. I mean, you said it already, but just to yes. reiterate, he's the yes. guy to get. Yeah. The number one guy. Agree, Jamie? James Cook is the, the rest of season play? Depending on what you need, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll tell you one guy who has amazing matchups rest of season is just his production is so limited is Nico Collins. And that starts after this week with Dallas this week. Then it's the Chiefs, the Titans and the Jaguars in the fantasy playoffs. Those teams rank 28th, 32nd, 24th against wide receivers. Even when Brandon Cooks was playing, he was still getting, you know, 10, 7 and 9 targets in his three previous games. So uh, look, he doesn't do much with the targets but he's got amazing matchups after this week, Nico Collins. Fantasy Football Today in 5 is a great way to stay up to date on all the latest fantasy news, the matchups, um, the injuries, all that uh, great stuff with Chris Towers. And you can just download or subscribe to the Fantasy Football Today podcast wherever you're listening to FFT. And you could also watch it on YouTube at youtube.com slash fantasy football today. All of our shows, all of our live streams, our DFS show, they're all at youtube.com slash fantasy football today. Um, and we are giving away some more Paramount Plus months here. If you want a free month of Paramount Plus, 
You got to be in our live stream. So again, if you want to watch us live, we record at about 8.40 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, we recorded about 2 p.m. Eastern on Monday. Sunday is about 8 p.m. Eastern for the recap show. Anyway, during all of our live streams, we also have YouTube exclusive live streams. 8 p.m. tonight, every Tuesday night, 2 p.m. Thursdays, and these are all Eastern, and 11.30 a.m. on Sunday. So youtube.com slash fantasy football today. But anyway, if you want to get a free month of Paramount Plus, hit that like button. If we get up to, oh, we're already at uh, 106. That's good. Oh, that's if, awesome. If we get up to 300 likes, I'll give away a free month of Paramount Plus. So we'll keep promoting that throughout the show. Okay. Um, news and notes. So reviewing some of the stuff we already discussed, Garoppolo out for the year, Lamar Jackson probably not going to play this week. And almost certainly not going to play this week. They're calling him week to week. Mahomes has a foot, but he should be okay. Trevor Lawrence mentioned him. We'll see. They're optimistic about him. Same with Tua Tonga Bailoa. Aaron Rodgers going into a bye, and he said that he is close to his thumb and his ribs basically not being an issue. So it, hopefully he can come out of the bye healthy. But Dave, do you think we sh need to hold on to Aaron Rodgers or is he expendable? He has the Rams, the Dolphins, and the Vikings. Pretty good matchups, especially yeah. Dolphins and Vikings. If he's still the quarterback at that point, do we need to hang on to Rodgers? He's one of those guys where if you need the roster spot and he is your most droppable player, you should feel okay dropping him. If you've got a better quarterback anyway, you should feel even better about dropping him. But otherwise, you should hang on to him if you can. All right, Carolina released Baker Mayfield. Do you guys see any reason to pick him up? No? Okay, good. Ken Walker, <laughs> ankle. <laughs> Joe Mixon, hoping to be cleared early. So, yeah, Jamie, you, you didn't have Chuba Hubbard in the waiver wire column as of now. I, I didn't give him to you. I don't think so. I, I must I must have added it after I sent the email. You know what it was? I, I did the notes for uh, the HQ show, added it to those notes. I probably didn't add it to yours. Okay, so, yeah, I mean. It, I, put him, I put him at the end uh, behind Jordan Mason. So it's not. I think someone you have to go rush to get as of now. Now we could get to Wednesday and Foreman doesn't practice. And then that looks silly. So if you want to put him ahead of Jordan Mason or Ty Johnson, or the other guys that you're going to see listed for, for me in the column, I certainly don't have a problem with that. But uh, I, I think Foreman, the way he was talking, the fact that he finished the last game against Denver should make him at least, um, I would guess, questionable at worst. I, I don't think he's going to be listed as, as, as doubtful or, or out, at least as of now. Yeah, Seattle is uh, very bad against the run right now, pretty bad defensively right now. So if you had an opportunity where Hubbard, where Foreman were out, then Hubbard would be pretty appealing. But we're thinking right now that Foreman will play. Aaron Jones could have come back uh, in the game last week, but he was a little banged up, so they played it safe. He'll be fine for after the bye. I think I mentioned Mike Williams is expected to practice this week. Cortland Sutton, though, left with a hamstring injury, and they get the Chiefs. They should have to, th you think they'd be throwing a lot. Uh, Quez Watkins hurt his shoulder. Hayden Hurst is doubtful. Oh, how about Tyron Smith? The Cowboys are averaging 35 points per game on offense, not even counting their defensive touchdowns in their last six games with Dak Prescott. 35 points per game. They get the Texans this week, and they could have left tackle Tyron Smith back. Um, the Dolphins are obviously beat up at offensive tackle. They put right, right tackle Austin Jackson on IR. They signed old man. He's not that, that old, actually. Eric Fisher. Uh, I won't go through the other stuff. His knees boil. are old. What did you say? His knees, knees are old. <laughs> oh, his knees are old. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry. I thought you said A's are old. It's like, is that an A's? Now, that would make good? zero sense because yeah. you're like 28. 38. But I do act like I'm 28. So thank you, Dave. And uh, yeah, the other injuries will keep you up to date throughout the week. So let's do the top three at each position. And Dave, I'm going to give you a quarterback. Okay. And you mentioned Jared Goff, who's not quite available in the, you know, in under 65% no. of leagues, but he's 68% rostered. So he's there. Um, and Jamie, would he be number one on your list of available, Jared? 1,000%. Okay. I, I will just bring this up because I thought it was funny. He has had nine completions this year where his receiver has been tackled at the two yard line or closer, but not scored. Six of them have have been followed up by a Jamal Williams rushing touchdown. Jamal Williams has eight touchdowns from the one yard line. <laughs> but golf, I mean, golf has just been so unlucky. 
This is why the fantasy production hasn't been that good. But uh, anyway, all right. So if golf is number one, Dave, who's the rest of the wide of the quarterback priority list? I've got Ryan Tannehill next, sixty three percent available, followed by Mac Jones because I think the Patriots offense bounces back against Arizona. We know how Arizona is against the pass. Uh, and then f- those two followed by Tyler Huntley, who's not surprisingly available in pretty much every single fantasy league that's out there. Tannehill, Mac Jones, Tyler Huntley. That's pretty different than your list, Jamie. So golf would be one for both of you, but mm-hmm. he went Tannehill, Mac Jones, Tyler Huntley. What would be your top three after golf? Uh, Huntley, Mike White, Tannehill. I have no interest in Mac Jones. Yeah, I mean, it's a, he obviously played like crap last week, but he gets the Cardinals. We'll talk about Hunter Henry in a 24 bit. 24 fantasy points to five of the past six quarterbacks they've faced. And then here and comes it's a dream. Matchup. It is a dream matchup for Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, for Yeah. And for Hunter Henry, if that matters. Yeah. You know what? what? That matters. matters for them. I mean, they, they are they are completely in disarray right now. The fact that Bill Belichick even hinted at his disappointment with Matt Patricia and the play calling tells you where they're at right now. Like, I mean, just I thought Kurt Warner's criticism of them was pretty fair in the Boston Herald where he said um, he as a quarterback, he likes creativity and they have absolutely zero creativity right now. They are doing absolutely the same thing. Play after play, game after game. It's it's just maddening. Now, hopefully things change. Maybe they do. I don't know if Matt Patricia and Joe Judge are the minds to change this offense because who knows? And it's not exactly like they have the personnel that's going to ob- that's going to make things that much better. So uh, to me, this is uh, especially if Jacoby Myers doesn't play. I have zero faith that Matt, he may he may stumble into good production, but there's no chance I would start him over Huntley. I wouldn't start him over. Um, I would start him over Brock Purdy. I think Purdy's in a much better situation taking on the the Bucks than than Mac Jones is right now. I need a refresher and leave this to me to do how Huntley did last year. No, I'll tell you, I have it in the notes. He was was pretty bad for four starts and great for one. That's what I thought. He had a 40 point game. And other than that, he didn't score more than 17.3 points. And those were in his five games, four starts, five games where he had 31 or more pass attempts. But he has such a good rushing floor, 40 or more rushing yards in each game. His problem is interceptions. Those are a lot of interceptions. So, um, yeah, and, and then, so for Tannehill, Dave, like, how much does Traylon Burks matter? If Traylon Burks doesn't play, are you dropping Tannehill? And when a guy gets a concussion, I just assume they're going to miss a game. It almost always happens now. Sure. Um, I think that matters a little. Like, maybe not to the point where we just have to run away from Ryan Tannehill. Again, it's a very favorable matchup with the Jaguars giving up at least 22 fantasy points to six of the past seven quarterbacks that they've gone up against. Matt Ryan earlier this year had 30 fantasy points against Jacksonville. So I like the opportunity for Tannehill, and, and Jamie's been calling it out for weeks. Tannehill finds ways to get to 20 fantasy Not points. lately, though. <laughs> no, not well, look, last week notwithstanding. Um, last two games. Well, who did he play two weeks ago? I'm blanking on it. Two games ago was... Uh, the Bengals. 12 and a half okay. minutes against the Bengals. So he's had some tougher matchups. This is a this is a step down in competition. I feel good with Tannehill. Yeah, he's it's had the Bengals in the game, This is a terrible week for quarterbacks. Yeah, I probably should have said that first. <laughs> well, <laughs> golf, golf is definitely the best option. Hopefully you can you can get your hands on Jared Goff and hopefully the Vikings can't. <laughs> All right. Running backs, Jamie, the, <laughs> Jamie, the best running backs. You already mentioned that, but uh, we'll just put it put it on paper. I guess the best running backs to get are who? Uh, James Cook, one Cam Akers, two and DJ Dallas being the most likely Seattle replacement three. And what's what's our read on Seattle right now? Because Dallas only came back in the game, I believe, because Tony Jones got dinged up. No. Uh, Tony Jones actually did not get dinged up. Dallas right. got dinged up uh, in the first half and came back in the second half. And he said that he wanted to be out there for his team. So the fact that he spoke to the media after the game, the fact that he came back in, I think that leads it to be him the most likely candidate unless they make a move to add somebody else because I'm sure there's some former Seattle running back uh, lurking somewhere. Where's Marshawn? Um, yeah, uh, well, it's funny you say that, though, because the story I read in the Tacoma News was was funny. Uh, it was interesting. Um, so Dallas, you know, talked about hurting his ankle but coming back in. So I'm going to guess it was probably a minor ankle sprain, but clearly something to keep an eye on. Uh, Tony Jones, however, uh, at the start of the third quarter, lost one of his contacts when he went into the medical – lost one of his contacts, went into the medical tent, and they could not find a replacement. So he decided to take his other contact out. According to the story in the Tacoma News, 
he's not allowed to drive without his contact. So he was basically blind playing in the game. And he talked about if he saw a blue jersey, he was just trying to avoid it when he was out there. So just an absolutely crazy story that they lose, you know, at points in the game, their top two running backs, and that Tony Jones, blind, was their best running back out there. Um, So uh, we'll see what they do. You know, Homer is going to be a a, a factor, I think, on passing downs. I don't think DJ Dallas is a – is a slam dunk like, you know, uh, a Zonovan Knight, for example, stepping in and, and yeah. you're getting, you know, consistent production. But it's a it's a decent matchup, not a great matchup. You know, if it was Kenneth Walker, we'd have no hesitation. But I think with Dallas, he's a flex at best. But, I, I you know, we always talk about this, you know, deeper leagues. You're not going to find James Cook. You're not going to find K-Makers. This is probably the best bet for you to get something of some significant production. And here's the quote from Pete Carroll on Monday. Quote, DJ has somewhat of a high ankle issue. Right. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know about the MRIs with that yet. We haven't got that back. So there's a chance you could put in the claim for Dallas and he ends up not even playing. I would be I would be particularly careful with that claim. But also, Travis Homer has a knee sprain. So he may not All play. these guys could potentially play. That th- This is the craziest thing of all, is that you literally have four running backs. Is it four? I think it's four that could play or not play. For oh, Ken Walker could play, yeah. <laughs> right. right. Walker hasn't been ruled out yet either. He just right. has a heel, a jammed heel or jammed ankle, I think he said. Uh, and they are facing the Panthers, who, you know, defensively they've been, they've really faltered, I think, lately. Uh, so I guess the question is um, if it's not Ken Walker, if let's say it's DJ Dallas, he's the starter, does he crack your top 24 this week? No, I don't think so. All right. Wide receiver. Uh, Dave, give me your top three. Collins is one. Gallup is two. Hollins is three. I'm sounding very bored because this is a boring list. There isn't anybody who's a must start fantasy wide receiver. There isn't. There are very few wide receivers who even have, um, I would say, like stash appeal. Jamison Williams would be at the top of that list. He's 42% available. I expect his playing time and his targets to rise as the season keeps going. That's really it. You know, like, I, I want to make the case for Rashid Shahid and his playing times have gone up in New Orleans, and the Saints are clearly going to have to throw in just about every game they're in. But who's excited about stashing Rashid Shahid? Who's excited about starting Nico Collins? You've got to be in the biggest of pinches to use any of the wide receivers that I've talked about. Well, who is the third guy? You said Nico Collins, Michael Gallup, and who? Mac Hollins, Hollins, who's who's thirty eight percent available. You might not be able to get your cloppies on him. Yeah, I, I would say um, that Zay Jones, if he gets dropped, is someone that you could go back to. I mean, we we talk about it now a lot. The Titans, sure, they don't. And there's one more that. name. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know how, who, who will be excited about adding DJ Chark, who had a pretty nice game yeah. against his former team. But you know that. The more that Jamison Williams works and works on his game, the less and less Chark theoretically will be able to contribute and be a, a confidently started in our leagues. Okay. Um, and Jamie, the top tight ends this week would be Dolcich. <laughs> um, I go I go Dolcich, Henry for the matchup, and then Evan Ingram. Okay. Dolcich. Hunter Henry against Arizona, and then Ingram, is he like a distant third? I mean, look, he he should have had touchdowns in back-to-back games. Um, You know, got one called back two weeks ago. Uh, Thought he would have a decent game against the Lions. He he wasn't bad. It's another favorable matchup, I think, against Titans, you know, just based on how their secondaries perform. So uh, low-end starter with six teams on a bye. I got another name for you. Do you want an hour later? Yeah, go for it. Chig Okonkwo. Hmm who saw a season high in playing time and snaps and routes run last week happened in the same game where Traylon Burks got hurt. So they could be connected. He's had five targets in back-to-back weeks. It's not a high number, but we're desperate at tight end. He's had a 30 yard catch in four of his past five games. He's a smooth runner. He's got big size lines up in the slot. He lines up outside too. Uh, And he's playing Jacksonville. They've given up at least nine half PPR points to two tight ends in two of their past three games. So four tight ends total. In the past three weeks have hit that nine half PPR point mark. I like him better than Austin Hooper for the Titans as long as Traylon Burks is out. DSTs, we already kind of went through the list. It's not a great one. The Chiefs would be the best if they are available. They're 76% rostered. So that means for those of you playing on 
ESPN or Yahoo leagues are probably like 4% rostered. Uh, but the, with the Chiefs, the Steelers, um, the Seahawks, not widely available. But if they are available, you can get them. If not, Jamie, which DSTs are we looking at? Uh, I think the Titans would be my my next favorite choice. Uh, I would actually look at the Bengals. Uh, Deshaun Watson looked a little lost. And so, you know, Cleveland on the road there. Uh, Bengals would be my next favorite choice. And then I'm still going to take my chances against the Rams. Uh, so I'll go with the Raiders as the number three option. Um, I think the pass rush for Las Vegas will certainly be a problem for whether it's an injured John Walford who's dealing with some neck injury or certainly Bryce Perkins have to start again. So uh, the Raiders would be my next favorite option. Let me tell you something about the Raiders. They have 11 sacks in their last three games. They had 10 sacks in their first nine games. They're all from Max Crosby, too, aren't they? <laughs> Probably not all of them, but uh, sometimes sacks come in bunches. Kicker, uh, kicker, uh, Jamie, what's your name again? Um, I'll go with uh, Mike Badgley coming off a huge game against the Vikings at home. Uh, Cameron Dicker just continues to have pretty much consistent production since he's taken over the job. And then Ryan suck up, even though he's got to go to the 49ers. But again, coming off a three field goal game last night, I think he's worth looking at also. IDP, Dave, anything? I have one. I don't have day. anything yet. Yeah, I picked up a guy, uh, Cody Barton. He is a linebacker. Seahawks for the linebacker. Seahawks. He has been tearing it up lately. He did have an interception uh, against the Rams. But before that, I mean, look at the, co- the combined tackles. 9, 12, 7 in his last three games. He's been playing a lot. Uh, Carolina runs the ball a ton, so he should be on the field. There's a little bit of concern that if they're, you know, facing a team that's throwing a lot, he'll come off the field. But Cody Barton is a guy that you could, uh, that you could add. It's fun when you have, I had this week where like all my IDPs, I, I, uh, Denzel Ward was a Denzel Ward. He just picked up the fumble and went right into the end zone and scored. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Like, so it got some forced fumbles. I mean, it was weird. It was one of those, uh, when that happens, it's kind of fun. It's like, Oh, could not have predicted that, but that was convenient. It's like starting a terrible play. It's like starting Nico Collins, and he scores a garbage time touchdown. But all right, if you find any uh, IDPs later, let us know. In fact, I'm going to give you time to think about. You know what, Dave? I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, you don't have a lot of teams that you root for. No, uh, that, I have no teams that I root for in the NFL. In the NFL, right? But you know, you got a pretty good college basketball team that you. Yes, for. I do. All right, so why don't you get on the Seat Geek app? And why don't you use our promo code FFT and save 20 bucks off your first SeatGeek order? Dave and I need a winner, especially me. I'm a Knicks fan. Giants are going to fold. They're not gonna, probably not going to win another game. Uh, I need a winner. So I'm going to be in Florida next month. I'm going to go to a Hurricanes game. I'm going to use SeatGeek to get the seats, and I'm going to get 20 bucks off my purchase with the promo code FFT. Go to SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app. SeatGeek is the freaking best. All right? Yes. It's- tickets from all over the web puts them all in one place so you don't have to go searching different websites for tickets you can just go to one place and that is SeatGeek concerts sports any type of major event just go to SeatGeek.com or again download the app and take a look I like sorting to include the fees so you know exactly how much you're going to pay when you look at the map of the seats they got these big green dots for the best value they got these red dots for the bad values you know which ones to get you can sort by price you can sort by uh um, section you can sort by deal score, which is you know value. So I, I strongly recommend SeatGeek. You're gonna love it, and you're gonna save twenty bucks. Again, get twenty dollars off your first purchase with the promo code FFT at SeatGeek.com or on the SeatGeek app. That is promo code FFT for twenty bucks off your first SeatGeek order. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Download the app today. Literally used it yesterday to buy tickets to the NC State University of Miami college basketball game this weekend. No kidding. That's cool. My my son said they're playing on Saturday. I want to go. And I haven't gone to a Canes game yet this year with Ryan. So I said, let's do it. And he, he told me to go to some other site. I said, no, no, no. We're going to SeatGeek. And so we went to SeatGeek. And he'd never gone to SeatGeek.com before. Looked it up. Saw the green dots. We found the seats we wanted. Bought them right there. There you go. And now you can't use the promo code anymore, but that's okay. <laughs> I can't anyway. I've used SeatGeek before, but wow. Wow. other people can. There you go. All right, let's do the uh, none of these guys are available in my league segment. The <laughs> deep league guys. Dave, you want the deep league guys or the shallow league guys? Uh, I, I, either one. I'm ready for both. All right, deep league options. These guys are available in your leagues. Deep league snobs. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, who's who? Are we looking at. 
Tyler Huntley is going to be at the top of the list of quarterback because he's 97% available. But if you're like me and you think the Patriots get their act together against a bad Cardinals defense, you go with Mac Jones ahead of Tyler Huntley. I'm worried about that ceiling for Tyler Huntley against the Pittsburgh Steelers at running back. Uh, I don't know what the roster ship is for DJ Dallas, but I imagine it's pretty high. So he or Tony Jones would be the top guys there. If I'm stashing, I'm looking for Jordan Mason, 78% available. He's going to be available in a lot of leagues. Joshua Kelly could be in that same boat. He's out there in 95% of leagues. Uh, about 10 minutes ago, I complained about what good would Rashid Shahid do on a fantasy roster, but if it's a deep league, he's available 99% and his playing time has gone up. He led the saints in receiving yards in week number 13. Uh, and then at tight end Okonkwo already talked about him. He's 99% available. Other tight ends that aren't very exciting. Noah Fant, Dan Bellinger, they're available in over 80% of leagues and that Raiders defense. I probably needed to give them a little bit more love. 88% available. They have been playing better. If the Rams, even if they start Wolford, I, I think they deserve a little bit of credit. I always hate starting bad defenses as DSTs, but they're the matchup is really, really good. I'd have to give them some thought too. If uh if if Dallas is hurt, obviously Tony Jones should be on that list too. Right. And they're both available in a bazillion leagues. Yeah. Dallas is two percent rostered. Actually, this isn't a week where Probably a number of the guys we're going to talk about are are uh, deep league guys. Did you say Brock Purdy? I did not say Brock Purdy, but he's definitely going to be out there in 100% of leagues. Yeah, so from a super flex standpoint, guys, um, Huntley or, or Purdy, and obviously part of that factor is you know Purdy, oh, he, he could lose the job. But, you know, it's he's got a longer, maybe a longer stretch of games but of course well, longer lifespan for sure yeah I, I think Purdy makes more sense if you're talking long term in those formats yeah. and I, I think he's got a chance to operate as a good like a better than a basic game manager for them like he seems like he's able to like read defenses seems accurate on short throws I worry a little bit about those longer throws but the 49ers don't do a ton of that anyway Oh, yeah. So I read a scouting report on him yesterday from Chris Chapasso on our website. He does not have a strong arm, but he, yeah, he can definitely process and mm -hmm. make good decisions. He threw very, very short in this game. As you know, I mean, McCaffrey had eight catches. Yeah, his ADOT was under six. But also, Jacob Gibbs pointed out yesterday on Beyond the Box score that his, AD, his ADOT is air yards per pass attempt under six. It's something like 5.6. And he had a very high off target percentage. So that's a really concerning sign. Uh, Purdy was the last pick in the NFL draft. There is a chance he loses the job. I think you have to at least, you know, if you're going to in a super flex league, just, I guess, be aware. He may not, he may just be a bad quarterback, you know? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll know Mayfield right. status or I, I shouldn't say that. our audience will know Mayfield status. A lot of people who are listening to this later yeah. in the day, because we'll find out this afternoon if any team has claimed him. And if the 49ers do claim him, I think that tells you that they're going to explore the potential of what he could be in a few weeks. Clearly, Purdy is starting week 14. But if he stinks against the Bucs, it could be Josh Johnson. It could be Mayfield if he's the guy they get. It could be somebody else. You know, I don't think they're done looking at their quarterback room. They are a legit Super Bowl contender. Not as strong without Garoppolo, but they're still a Super Bowl contender. All right, fine. I'll just say it. I don't think they have a chance in hell with Brock Purdy. Agreed. Well, I would agree. Yeah. But I don't think they have a chance in hell with Baker Mayfield either. I don't think they're a Super Bowl contender anymore. I, I hate to say well, it. Well, I mean, I, I think their their formula for success is still, you know, there. And, you know, Garoppolo was going to be much better than anything they have. But they're still going to have a championship caliber defense. They're still going to have a championship caliber skill positions, uh, championship caliber skill positions, uh, a great offensive line, and, and a creative play caller. So in, in a conference that, you know, you probably have to, you know, be, be two pretty good teams, you know, at least. We'll yeah, no, I, I, I think they definitely were one of the favorites. It's a shame they're so talented. Maybe they can, you know, maybe they can get by. Uh, just look, they got Nick, they're Nick the, Foles Yak, the Yak Let's team, right? Was that Nick Foles won a Super Bowl? Yeah, and they and they can make things very easy for a quarterback because just get the ball in your playmaker's hands. If there's one team where Brock Purdy can thrive, I think it's probably this team, or or at least be acceptable. All right, Jamie, how about the shallow league guys? This is this will be an exciting list because, you know, you could pick up Dallas Goddard. We haven't talked about him, but you got to pick up Goddard. If he's available, he could come back next week. Judy, I mean, there are a lot of guys. Golf, is, of course. Who are some of the shallow league guys that we could be looking at making a big-time priority? 
Yeah, there, there, there could be a few more. I, I'm, I'm just sticking to the ones I gave you, uh, which is the one that will be in the column. So Jared Goff, at quarterback. Uh, the running backs will be Zonovan Knight. He's at 81% roster. J.K. Dobbins at 69%. You know, hopefully he's back soon. Uh, the receivers, you mentioned Judy as, as one of those guys. I, I go back to Jacoby Myers. He's at 83%, you know, Sterling PPR. Uh, Traylon Burks, 71%. If there's somebody you want to stash on their bye week, Drake London uh, coming off his best game, you know, hopefully he's going to finish the season strong. Uh, you mentioned Adam. I go back to Zay Jones, too, if he was dropped, 67%, though. He's certainly within the range of, of being added. Uh, at the tight end position, Gerald Everett's at 82%. You know, last week was a good game for him. Hopefully that's con- going to continue. Uh, Dallas Goddard, you mentioned 81%. David Njoku is at 80%. Hopefully he's healthy soon. Uh, Darren Waller, you know, he's eligible to return this week. He's at 70%. So um, there, there are plenty of guys in 10-team leagues that might have been dropped. And hopefully, you know, they can, uh, they can in, in the case of some of the injuries, you know, come back and, and perform well and, and help you. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll recap Tampa Bay and New Orleans and give you some more names to know on the waiver wire. And I think talk a little bit more about James Cook, for example. What kind of role do we expect? We're definitely telling you to add him, but let's talk about our expectations for James Cook. Um, you know, Gerald Everett in the shallower leagues. What happens when Mike Williams comes back? We'll, we'll bring all of these things into the discussion. And we'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. The Bucks with an improbable win, 17-16. It was... It was an ugly game, and these teams play a lot of ugly games when they face each other. Dalton, I think it's funny because Dennis Allen, I guess, didn't commit to him after the game, but he was the better quarterback in this game. Uh, anyway, um, Dave, what are your fantasy takeaways? Another dud for Kamara, you know, mm-hmm. Evans. What, what do you got here? If we could still make trades in our leagues, I'd say Kamara is the best buy low running back on the board because he's been terrible for so long, but when he comes back from the buy, the schedule lightens up and his offensive line might be healthy and we could really see Alvin Kamara finish the season strong. So keep some faith. If you're going to make the playoffs in spite of Kamara, I do not like that. Mark Ingram had such a role in this game and we've seen it now. I think it's yeah, that might not happen after what he did. What? That might not happen moving forward after what he did. Well, sure. It's definitely possible, but uh, I, I think there's still a lot of opportunity for Kamara here. I think that's the bottom line. And, you know, a two catch game. I wouldn't expect that to be the case far more often. I think the running backs for Tampa are worth talking about. Fournette played 60% of the snaps, four of five snaps inside the 10. I feel like we got lucky with Rashad White, who caught the game winning touchdown, had eight targets. Fournette had seven. Both those guys are going to continue to get work, but I got a feeling that White's going to end up being uh, a low floor type of fantasy play. So not a must start moving forward and someone you've got to worry about a little bit. It's going to, it's going to be a a massive headache for you. Love the fact that they went back to that. I agree. That's good. But still Fournette played more and he had more of those short yardage reps. So if you've got both those running backs, you're going to have a headache every week. Well, it's kind of interesting though. Well, first of all, Jamie was talking about what Mark Ingram did. He went out of bounds a yard short of a, of a key first down late Mm -hmm. in the game. And he said he was sick about it. I do not think he's going to lose playing time over that though. Um, and it's kind of significant because Kamara has played his two lowest snap percentage games have been with Ingram the last two weeks, other than week one when he left with an injury. Uh, so, and, and we saw that last year, by the way, his four lowest snap rate games were with Mark Ingram. So it's just Ingram is a factor that no other running back on that team is when Ingram is around. Um, no, I mean, look, the Tampa Bay running backs are really interesting because if they're both going to be this involved in the passing game and they, he threw 54 passes. So that's a lot, but Mm -hmm. over 40 is pretty regular for Tom Brady. So, I mean, you could have four more catches from them. That's not unrealistic every week. And they become in the PPR discussion. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, let's talk a little bit more about it's a, it. It's a poor man's version of of the Cowboys. I, I think you can use both as certainly flex yeah. options. That goes without saying. Um, I, I'm still going to give a slight nod to White because he at least got the start, played the first eight snaps. Um, you know, while, while Fournette may be working his way back from the hip injury, and and they were just taking it easy with him. Um, it was you know, forget about the playing time. The the touches were almost identically split. You know, nine carries for one, ten for the other, five catches for one, six for the other. You know, so they're going to use them, I think, in, in a pretty heavy rotation. Um, the fact that it was a hurry up offense, time to score, light was on the field. I think they, they they want him to take the job. You know, has he done enough to do it? Probably not. But I think they want him to take the job. So, you know, if if he does, could be great. Um, it's going to be a problem with Fournette there. But uh, for now, I, I 
you know, if it if it's fifty one forty nine, I'm going to give that slight edge to to Rashad White. Okay, it was hard to say, you know, who was in near the goal line because it was Fournette on the opening drive, and he's so slow. He should have had a touchdown catch on that first drive. But yes. he was, yeah, he got so caught from slow. behind so many times too. Oh, he's so slow. Mm -hmm. Um, but then White, of course, caught the touchdown at the very end. But I think, you know, if I had to guess it's third and goal at the one yard line. I'm guessing that's a Leonard Fournette down. Um, what do you think about Evans? Like, are you going to start Mike Evans going forward? It's what, seven straight games without a touchdown now? Um, and this was four catches for 59 yards on four targets. But he, like, how many? That can't be right. He had more than four targets, right? No, he had four targets. Really? That's it. Yeah, he did. Ha he could have had a 44, I think, yard touchdown, and he got interfered with right at the one yard line. But man, Tom Brady just cannot connect on the deep ball with anyone. So starter sit Mike Evans this week at San Francisco. It's hard to sit him with six teams on a bye, especially in three receiver league. This was a normal week. He would not be a top 24 guy. He was barely top 24 guy for me last week. I was just, I, I got more excited when Lattimore was ruled out because it looked like Lattimore was going to play. Um, He's he's struggling right now, and you know clearly Julio Jones, Russell Gage played last night for what that's worth. You know Scott Miller's getting targets, Kate Otten's getting targets. Um, it's Godwin or bust right now. It feels like for Brady and the running backs, and so it's just Mike Evans has been sort of lost in the shuffle a little bit. The fact that the touchdowns have you know not been there for him is is very very frustrating. So four target game when you got your quarterback throwing fifty four times, uh, that's that's tough. It's very very tough. So you know I I think the guys that have been consistently producing or out producing him, you know, Josh Palmer, for example, is easy to start over Mike Evans at this point. Uh, Assuming with, that with Williams Mike, is out. Mike yes. Williams out. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's now falling rapidly into that Matt Collins, Nico Collins, Michael Gallup group, you know, where those guys are playing, playing better than him and getting more opportunities than him. Now, again, you're not going to start those guys over him this week. At least I, I wouldn't, but um, it's 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 very very tough. I don't think Mike Evans is right now somebody you can count on to win you a fantasy championship. I agree. And you just you, you could say to yourself, oh, you know, it was the Saints, and Brady knows that he he's got to find other targets than Mike Evans against the Saints. But what's the excuse for last week against Cleveland, where he had two catches on nine targets? The nine targets is what we're kind of used to from Evans. Game before that against Seattle, he only had six targets. It's been forever. I mean, you've got to go back to early October to find a game where he caught a touchdown. And you've got to go to late October to find a game where he had more than 60 yards. So yeah. I, I'm with you, Jamie. I think this is a guy that you've got to consider sitting in all formats. Godwin is now the end zone guy. I mean, Godwin had a touchdown called back. Called back. Yes. Me and a lot of people, fantasy leagues. Did you think he was holding? Did you think that Donald Smith was holding on that play? 100%. It was, it seemed like, a very small hold. Maybe I just he sour him. grape because I have Godwin. Rashad White ended up with the touchdown one or two plays later. So, yeah, I'm pretty annoyed about that. But, uh, all right. And if you're wondering, hey, Kate Otten had 10 targets. He caught a touchdown. He won the game. We haven't spoken about him. Cameron Brait missed the game with an illness, which was a surprise. So, Otten. I wish he would not play again. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know what, dude? If if Brady has his way and he feels the way you feel, he won't play again. Now nah, he's a big part of their blocking. All right, guys, let's go um, to the drop -o meter I only have a few names here. Jamie puts drop candidates in the waiver wire column, so we'll talk about them. The drop -o meter real quick. Here we go. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, 0 to 10. Three. Zero. I'm not there yet. I want to see another game. You know, shook off the rust, hopefully, for him and – you know, probably going to be chasing points or throwing a lot. They did lose three offensive possessions. You know, I mean, two defensive scores and a special team score, you know, so that may have changed the the course of how things looked. He obviously looked bad, but I, I still think we, we've said it and, you know, it, it's just seemingly happening every week. So maybe it's just not a fluke. The Texans don't allow points to quarterbacks, you yeah. know, it's just week in, week out, <laughs> every game. And so um, let's see what he does against Bengals. Yeah, well, the problem is the Bengals don't allow a lot of points to quarterbacks either. So if you're not using Watson this week and you're in a desperation mode, I, I think you put him in the same bucket that we talked about with Aaron Rodgers, where he is droppable, but you shouldn't want to drop him. You didn't hear our Beyond the Box score episode in our film review. You can't imagine a quarterback playing worse than Deshaun Watson. Some of the throws he made were yes. so horrible. And it's obviously you know why. He hasn't played in two years. 
but he, he definitely was shaking off some rust. I can't guarantee that he's going to just be back to normal anytime soon. All right, just give me numbers here. Donovan Peoples-Jones, 0 to 10. 0 8. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, give me a 5, 10, 10 second explanation, Dave, why you're dropping Donovan Peoples-Jones. When are you going to feel good starting Donovan Peoples-Jones when he hasn't done much and certainly the last two weeks and save for one Mike drive like the last four weeks? Would you start him? Okay, better. Would you start him over Mike? Three weeks. Three weeks. No. Okay. So Jamie, I mean, if that's your theory that he hasn't done anything. Or are you are you dropping Mike Evans too? No. Because I believe Mike Evans can bounce back at least with targets. Okay. George Pickens, zero to ten. Zero. One. Paris Campbell. Ten. Eight. Ten and nine PPR. Yeah. Waiver wire time. Um, okay, so we love golf. We're at quarterback here. Tyler Huntley. Man, if he could just be a decent passer. He's got such a high rushing floor. He rushed for 40 yards in, in that in the game last week. So that's now every game where he's had, you know, significant work. He's rushed for 40 or more yards. You got those four points in the so. bank. <laughs> Uh, but some touchdowns in there too, some rushing touchdowns. Uh, just you know, Steelers are, are not an easy defense. You know, there have been three quarterbacks that have shredded them. They are Allen, Hurts, and Burrow. And other than that, they're they're not bad. All right, so oh, you know who we haven't talked about? Mike White. So he did not make Dave's top three, not including golf. So top four, including golf. He didn't make Dave's top three. He's number two for Jamie. So Mike White, three hundred plus yards in each game. He threw fifty-seven passes against the Vikings at Buffalo this week. What do you think, Jamie, about Mike White? Don't like him this week, but love him for the following three weeks. Gets Detroit, Jacksonville, and Seattle after that. And so, again, it's a terrible week for quarterbacks. Hopefully you're not scrambling to start somebody. I think the most upside play is Tyler Huntley by far. And then I think you start to look either what you need or what's looking ahead. And so looking ahead, Mike White might be the best of the group. Dave likes Tannehill to bounce back in a good matchup, but, uh, you know, Traylon Burks could factor in there. No worries. He's got Okakwo. <laughs> His history against Jacksonville is not great also just because they run so much against the Jaguars. But he also gets after Jacksonville. He gets um, the Chargers in week 15. So it's not a bad two-week stretch for Tannehill. But if he doesn't have Burks, and if this is a, this has got to be a get-right game for Derrick Henry. He's been absolutely atrocious. But he destroys Listen. the Jaguars. And so hopefully that's going to be the M.O. for, for Tennessee. This offensive line was bad um, across the board. Pass, defense, pass blocking, run blocking. So a um, lot working against Tannehill this week, but I do think if you are looking for hopefully a one-week solution, he could be okay. I think he can be. Uh, Henry has not played well, and defenses have started to come up with a good scheme to slow him down. They really want to try and push him to the edges instead of have him attack up the gut, so they're, they're really defending the gaps. Yeah, good Jaguars luck, are allowing 3.7 yards per carry to running backs in their past five games. That includes last week against Detroit when DeAndre Swift ran against them. Uh, I, I wonder if the Titans need to really develop that change up to the run game. This is the matchup for them to do it. Okay. Uh, Brock Purdy, Sam Darnold. These guys are starters. <laughs> um, Dave likes Mac Jones. Jamie does not. What about stashing Jordan Love in a super flex league? Any interest guys? You can, I mean, you know, if they're done, but I don't know what week they'll be mathematically eliminated. They're not going to be eliminated this week. And so we'll see what happens in week 15 when they take on the Dolphins. You're going to want to have Aaron Rodgers then. I expect they'll be playing. So they win that game. They win week 16 against uh, – I'll tell you in a second. I think you got the schedule wrong. I think the Rams are their next game in week I'm sorry. It's the Rams, then the Dolphins, then the Dolphins and then Minnesota. So three right. very favorable matchups. So if you want to hold on to Rodgers then, he was a drop candidate for me. But uh, if you want to add Jordan Love, it's a great matchup. So, But I think Rodgers will probably be able to play those three games. I'm pretty sure you'll go after Huntley first. You'll go after Purdy first, and then you'll get Jordan Love. There might not even be crazy demand for Jordan Love in super flex leagues if he's on the waiver wire still. Oh, I haven't uh, been promoting the likes. Just please hit the like button so we can give away a Paramount Plus, a free month of Paramount Plus. Please hit that like button on YouTube. All right, let's uh, let's go. Sorry, I think I muted myself. Let's go to the running backs here. Um, Check to see if Zonovan Knight is available and J.K. Dobbins. And who would you rather have rest of season, Knight or Dobbins? Knight. Do you think <sighs> Knight you'd rather have over Michael Carter, I assume? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
Do you think Knight is going to be worth starting when Michael Carter is back? Yep. Yes, I think Carter but, is 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 the compliment. Agreed. Okay. Do you think Dobbins will be worth starting? Eventually. I hope he's not an ornament on our fantasy benches. I'm starting a little nervous about that. Yeah, you know, I, I Gus Edwards had had a good game that I'd be like, well, I don't know, but they obviously they went away from him. If now he just has to beat out Kenyon Drake, and I don't know, he's got to be right. He's got to oh. be back to his old self. I don't know if that's happening this year. Yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't very good earlier this year. Oh, no. all right. So James Cook, guys, what kind of role and what kind of fantasy asset do you think James Cook is? He is forty percent rostered, Dave. He had six catches. He had 14 carries. Looked like he was shot out of a cannon. It was great to see um, Jets this week. But forget about matchups, really. Just like, what do you think about James Cook going forward in Singletary? He uh, he led the Bills. Or he split. He was dead even in playing time with Singletary last week. And uh, 11 touches in the first half, nine in the second half. They had a special package against the Patriots with him and Naheem Hines. Cook was great on those plays. Obviously a three-down player. I think that there's an opportunity where the Bills could eventually say, this kid's got fresher legs than Singletary. He's more explosive than Singletary. Let's put the ball in his hands just a little bit more. And they lead with him, particularly in games where they know they're going to need to throw. They go into a matchup. And this week could be one of those weeks against the Jets where you think about New York's defense. They're pretty good against the run. They've got good outside corners. This is a week where you could see James Cook get a little bit more work. Love the idea of making him a priority. If my team's already clinched a playoff spot or even a bye, and this week doesn't even matter, hell yeah, James Cook is going to be my top guy to pick up. But even if I'm if I'm hanging by a thread in my playoff league, I'm kind of interested in getting James Cook, and I might even consider starting him as a bye week replacement because of what he's capable of doing. Now, there's downside, too. In the three games prior to last week, he had 11 or fewer touches. Got 11 touches against Cleveland, and then against Minnesota and Detroit, Five or fewer touches. That's gross. You don't want to start that in your lineup, but there's potential here. Uh, he's really a fast running back. The question coming into the year was whether or not he'd be strong enough or durable enough to handle the NFL. And I, I don't know if that's necessarily been resolved, but the bills could use him in a smart way where they can alleviate that issue and they can put him in space. They can put him on draw runs. He, he could end up being a very, very nice fantasy asset down the stretch. Cam Akers, DJ Dallas, Ty Johnson. Ty Johnson had six catches last week. Um, he is still their third down back. And um, yeah, you know, he's just a PPR guy, but potential there. He only had one catch the week before. Uh, but, you know, if they're chasing points and throwing a ton, that's going to help Ty Johnson. They're at Buffalo this week. Jarek McKinnon is another guy. His, he doesn't catch that many passes, but he caught a touchdown. He's on the Chiefs, so that's good. And he's facing the Broncos this week. Uh, Jordan Mason is the number two running back right now for the 49ers. And there's a slight history of running back injuries on that franchise. Kenyon Drake, any interest in Kenyon Drake? Let's say Dobbins isn't back this week. Would you consider starting Drake? No, I still think Gus is going to be their preferred option. Well, what happened? Do you know what happened? Was there a reason why he wasn't? Don't know. That's just, yeah. That's the, like, Did you really watch Gus play? He averaged two yards a carry. Well, he barely had the ball. He didn't. He didn't have a lot of work. Yeah, I. I just my worry with him last week was, yeah, he's going to get the work, but he's slow, and maybe the Ravens realize that. I don't. I don't know if I'm comfortable with any Ravens running back moving forward. And the other guy to look at is Chuba Hubbard. So Hubbard is if Foreman is not able to play, Hubbard would be perhaps a pretty appealing start against the Bengals against the Seahawks. All right, wide receivers. The check to see if available list is Jerry Judy, Jacoby Myers. Are we really still on Jacoby Myers? Is it just because he's got Arizona this week? Yes. I, I don't think it's a bad idea to in PPR only to stash him mm -hmm. if somebody's dropping. Traylon Burks has you know been really good, and we just hope he's healthy. So grab him if he's available. Drake London coming off his best game, going into a bye, unfortunately. And Zay Jones, again, it was a, it was a dud, no question. But the Titans give up the most fantasy points to wide receivers. They see some of the most targets to, I think, maybe third or fourth most to wide receivers. The ads are Nico Collins, Michael Gallup, Mac Hollins. Uh, we'll start with those three. So I think we've talked enough about Collins. Um, 
He doesn't do much with targets, but he gets them. Bad matchup this week, then amazing after that. But Michael Gallup, guys. First of all, there's the Beckham thing. Beckham is rostered in about the same amount of leagues as Gallup. Uh, but are we, Jamie, do you think we're seeing something from Gallup? You know, what's your level of confidence in him? The last two games have been encouraging. 63 yards against the Giants, two touchdowns against the Colts. The uh, the interesting thing is that the Odell Beckham rumor started and Michael Gallup started to get more targets and producing. So I don't know if that's Dak trying to say we have a, a guy that we can rely on or Gallup saying, hey, give me the ball before somebody comes and steals my money. Um, <laughs> I, I think the thing that about Beckham, the report that we got from, I think it was Ralph Vaccario. Uh, I'm going to say that. Vaccaro. Vaccaro. Yeah, uh, I apologize. Um, that Beckham won't be ready this season is encouraging for Michael Gallup if you are looking at him because Beckham probably is going to take a few weeks to get acclimated to the Cowboys if that's where he signs. So I don't really worry about Beckham when it comes to Gallup. Uh, I think he's potentially a, a number three receiver the rest of the season. You know, you don't want to just rely on touchdowns, but, you know, season high in targets two games ago, if they're forced to throw, I think he's going to be heavily involved. And I'll find out for you because we're talking to C.D. Lamb on Wednesday. And you know what? It's another... Another guy that's gotten going about the same time as Michael Gallup, I would say, is Chris Godwin. Maybe these guys are just far enough removed from their injuries where they're finally finally back, close to back anyway, to uh, what they thought they'd be. Um, we haven't talked about Rondell Moore. So the thought of Rondell Moore being 60% rostered would be ridiculous, but he hasn't played a single game with both Hopkins and um, and Marquise Brown. Dave Moore's next two matchups are against teams that are that allow the fourth fewest and eighth fewest receiving yards to slot receivers. What do you think about adding Rondell Moore? I don't hate it, especially in PPR leagues. There's just no guarantee that he's going to be back out there, but could take as quickly as one practice to make it clear that Rondell Moore will play. Should be in the neighborhood for seven targets per game. I don't know if we can count on double digit targets per game now that Hopkins and Brown are there, but a not bad number three receiver in PPR. Jamison Williams, DJ Chark, which one would you pick up if you had, if you, well, you didn't need one, it'd be Williams. If you did need one this week, would you pick up Chark? Or Williams? Yes. Oh, Chark over Williams for this week. That's how I would have it. Okay. Corey Davis had 10 targets. Mike White threw a ton of passes. Uh, he really hasn't been that bad this year when he's been healthy, Corey Davis. No, and he's better against defenses that play a lot of zone. He's a zone beater. Okay. Uh, and Demarcus Robinson, actually. Look at his targets in the last five games. He's got three games with eight to nine targets. He's got three games with 11, 11 or more PPR fantasy points. It's obviously not great, but it's something. Would you prefer him to Devin Duvernay? Yes. All right. Those are the uh, wise. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. Just I, I'm not a Robinson fan because... You know, look at what he did three weeks ago. It was nine for 128, and then the game after that, he had one catch for 17 yards and a loss against Jacksonville. They had a lead in that game. But he's played at least 60% of the snaps in each of the last three weeks. And there is obviously high target potential, but I wouldn't prioritize him or any, especially now that there's a downgrade at quarterback for Baltimore. Yeah, he's at the bottom of the list, basically. The only guy behind him is Isaiah Hodgins, who's coming on a little bit for the Giants. They're facing the Eagles this week. We don't like wide receivers against the Eagles. No. Tight ends. Oh, drop. Uh, you can drop Brandon Cooks. You can drop Paris Campbell. Curtis Samuel, Kadarius Tony, and Chase Claypool are on the drop list. Tight ends. You can check to see if Gerald Everett is available. Would you like? He's got a great matchup against the Dolphins, and he's been very good typically when he's had a great matchup, except the Cardinals game for some reason. But if if Mike Williams and Keenan Allen play. Where would you rank Gerald Everett in a, this matchup against Miami? Um, bottom of the top 12. Ahead of Oconquo. Get Goddard. Waller's available in 30% of leagues. Njoku is available. Waller's eligible to play this week. So, interesting to keep an eye on there. Like, do you still have faith in Njoku after what we saw from Deshaun Watson? And, you know, I would like yeah. Watson a lot better if he had Njoku on the field. I mean, I, I think, yes. Okay. I mean, what else are you going to do? What are, well, what are your Dulcich. other options when you're comparing Njoku to some other tight ends? How about Dulcich? I think I'd rather have Njoku if I knew Njoku was healthy. Well, I mean, if you're going to have faith in any quarterback, it's got to be Russell Wilson. 
<laughs> would you uh would you um where I'm sorry, where are you ranking Hunter Henry? That was my question. Top ten this week. I've got him twelfth. Solely because of the matchup. And you like him better than Ingram? That honestly, if, no. if you believe in Mac Jones, you're hoping for a two touchdown game for Hunter Henry. <laughs> I'll take a one touchdown game. I'm not gonna be greedy. Uh I like Ingram better just because he's been consistently mostly involved in the Jaguars offense compared to Henry. If you need long-term, it's Ingram. If you need short-term, it's Henry. Yeah, if Cameron Brait were out, I'm sure we'd like Kate Otten, even against oh, yeah. the 49ers, but it was just an illness, so thinking Brait won't be out. And Chigo Conquo, let's see, his yards in his last five games, 48, 41, 31, 35, and 68. And solid. It's a shame they don't give him more chances. Yeah, he can make some plays after the catch, but... I don't, does he have a touchdown? You no, know he is. He's the new John New Smith. That the tease. <laughs> oh my God! Imagine what he could be. Imagine what he could be. Imagine and what he they could don't be. use him. Right. Can't wait for the Patriots to give him a big contract. I can't wait for the big run that he has this week. The big run. <laughs> yeah, like he gets know, a John handoff off inside the carry, two. Carry every now and then. <clears throat> All right, and that's pretty much it. Well, how about Noah Fant? You guys have any interest in him against the Panthers? No, you mind. have to be. 3 a.m. at the bar desperate for Noah fan. I don't know that I have ever once been at a bar at 3 a.m. Then you have not lived, sir. I'm going to say I never have been that late at a bar. You never you never hung out in the Grove at 3 a.m. 3 a.m.? I don't think so. I was so bored. As someone who didn't drink, mm -hmm. I would get bored almost instantly at a bar. I mean, five minutes in, I'm dying to leave. So 3 a.m., just... I don't think that was my thing. Yeah, you're not Mahomes. getting to the bar at 2:55 a.m. No. You never went to tavern and yeah, of course, but not loud and agree. sang along and all that stuff. No, you know, most college that was the thing about Miami. Like most college towns, their bars don't stay open that late. Like Miami, people are out freaking late. <laughs> you um, go to South Beach, you're out till 8 a.m. Yeah, and my biggest issue was getting all the drunk people in my car. Like, guys, we got, it's time to go. Can we please go? Okay, I have three of you. Wait, now I got to get that one. Okay, oh, wait, one of the previous ones left. Now I got to, like, it's like herding cattle. Um, DSD streamers, the Titans, the Bengals, the Raiders, and please, hopefully, cross your fingers, get the Chiefs or the Steelers or the Seahawks. Um, where was one other DST? We'll end the show with this. Any interest in the Cardinals? They've they uh, are not the worst, and the Patriots have been a great matchup lately. Um, any interest in the Cardinals, you know, this week? Uh, Jamie should yeah, love them. Bad. Yeah. Okay. I also think you know just the fact that Tua was so turnover prone in the first game without his tackles. The Chargers aren't horrible either. Just knowing that this could be another turnover fest for Tua. Yeah, I'm just, again, same thing with the Raiders. I'm scared to start a bad Oh, DST. these are all crappy defenses. I mean, the Seahawks are crappy defense, you know, and we saw what happened against That's the Rams. That's true. That's true. The Raiders are crappy defense. They get the Rams again. You know, I, I, I think there's a lot of reason to be concerned about several of these options. But, you know, you're looking at struggling offenses at this point. And, sure, the Cardinals are facing a struggling offense. Not a bad situation at all. Oh, uh, Dave, did you have your IDPs? I'm sorry. I got some IDPs. My favorite one doesn't even play this week. It's Jamin Davis for the commanders that defense is getting stronger and he's their best linebacker. So if you can wait till next week, make him a priority. The best linebacker who will play this week is Ernest Jones with the Rams going up against the Raiders. I'm sure he'll be very busy. Marlon Humphrey defensive back for Baltimore. In fact, everybody else I have is a DB Humphrey, Kyle Duggar, Taylor Rapp. And uh, I lied. There's one more linebacker, Jermaine Pratt with the Bengals. Okay. Thanks everybody for watching and listening. We will see you tonight with more waiver wire help at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, join us at youtube.com slash fantasy football today for Dave and Jamie and Thomas. I'm Adam. Later.